Hi everyone, it's Lisa Mears here and today I'm going to be making three stenciled birthday cards using the new Pretty Pink Posh stencils that were just released in Pretty Pink Posh's ninth birthday release. I love making cards using the layered stencils from Pretty Pink Posh because you can make beautiful, colorful cards in a matter of minutes. Just ink the stencils using your favorite inks, add a sentiment, and you're done. For my cards, I'm going to step up my stenciling just a little bit by adding a bit of sparkle for that extra touch. All supplies that I use in my video today will be linked in the description box of this video and on my blog at lisamearsdesigns.com. Also, these cards are part of a Pretty Pink Posh blog hop where you have a chance to win a gift certificate to the Pretty Pink Posh store. And to find out more about the blog hop, make sure you visit my blog. I want to take a minute to share this stamp set that you can get for free by spending $125 in the Pretty Pink Posh store. This offer is only good through February 18th, 2023 or while supplies last. And you do get the coordinating die set with this as well. In addition, you can save an extra 10% off your order using the code in the description box below. So let's get started with this first card. So this brand new stencil is called Layered Birthday Cake Stencil. It is a four layer stencil. So you have the cake, you have the frosting, the candles, and the flame for the candles. So I'm going to start out by using this stencil on a piece of colored cardstock. I have a piece of light pink cardstock that I cut to five and a half by five and a half inches. And by the way, these stencils are six inches by six inches square. I am going to be using some of my scrapbook.com inks and I'm starting with the pink flamingo for layer a. So it's the pink flamingo ink and I'm going to ink up this entire stencil using the one color. So the base coat of all of my cakes is going to be pink. And once I finish inking that entire stencil, I will remove it and add the second layer. I'll use the grid lines on my Make Art Station to make sure that it's lined up where the previous stencil was lined up. And then I'll add that stencil using the next color ink. And this ink is the Parisian Purple. So all of the frosting on all of my cakes is going to be in this purple color. Now, as you watch me work with this stencil, I want you to think about all the possibilities that you can use this stencil for. Just because it's called layered birthday cakes stencil does not mean that you have to just use it to make birthday cakes. You can use this for a wedding card or any type of celebration card. It doesn't have to be just for a birthday. Also keeping in mind that the layer with the candles can be optional. So if you were making this for a wedding card, you might not want to include the candles. So I went ahead and finished up that second layer and then removed that stencil and added the third layer, which is the candles. And for this layer, I'm using mixed berry ink. It's a darker pink ink. And I'm gonna ink up all of those candles with the same color. And once I finish, I will remove that stencil and I will add the stencil layer D. This is the fourth stencil and this is the flame for the candles. So I'll make sure that is lined up and I'm going to use my orange cream ink to ink up all of the candle flames. So after I finish inking up this last stencil, you can use the background as is, but I've decided I'm gonna add a little bit of sparkle to this stencil. So I'm going to add back the stencil layer B. This is the second layer that has the frosting on it. I'm just gonna line it up back in place and I'm going to use my Brutus Monroe Glitz Glitter Gel. This is in the alabaster color. So this glitter glaze comes in a variety of colors, but I'm using the alabaster because it is clear and when you add it to your stencil it will actually show the ink color underneath. So remember I added the purple color ink to the frosting and by adding this alabaster glitter glaze it's going to show that purple color through. So you can do this with any color ink that you have. If you put the frosting in a green color the green would show through. So that's what I love about this alabaster color because it's almost almost like a see-through or a clear glaze that you can show the underlying color of ink. 
So I'm just using a palette knife here to take it out of the bottle and then put it on to the stencil. And I'm using the side of the palette knife to scrape it off because I don't want too much excess. And then any excess that I have, I can put back in the bottle. I'll go ahead and remove this stencil and you can see all that sparkle. This will have to sit and dry before I cut down this layer or add anything else to this piece of cardstock. And I will wash that stencil off with the palette knife with some hot soapy water. So this next stencil is the layered party hats stencil. It is also a four layer stencil. So I cut down my cardstock to five and a half by five and a half inches. I'm going to go ahead and add my layer A stencil, which, which is the shape of the party hats. And I'm going to use my scrapbook.com inks. So I want my party hats to have a two-tone color effect. I'm going to use two different inks from the same color family using the lighter ink on the first layer which is the shape of the party hats. And then once I finish up this first layer, I'll come in with the second layer stencil and add the darker ink to the dots or the stripes on the party hats. So for this first row, I'm using my lighter pink, which is the pink lemonade. And I'm going to have a different color ink for each row of party hats. So my second row of party hats is gonna have some pink colors and I'm going to be using the pink flamingo which is my lightest color ink in the rose color family and I'm going to add it to the second row of party hats. My third row of party hats is going to have some purple inks and I'm going to use the Parisian purple which is the lightest purple for the third row of party hats. Remember that this is layer A stencil, which is the shape of the party hats, and I'll come back in on layer B, adding the darker color in those color families. So for my fourth and last row, I'm going to make this blues, and I'm going to use the ball ground blue ink, which is the lightest blue ink in this blue color family. So now that I finished with layer A, I'm going to add the layer B stencil by lining it up. And then I'm going to add all of the darker color inks to those rows. So for the first row, I'm adding the Havana Red, which is the darker ink in that pink color family. The second row, I'm going to be adding the Mixed Berry, which is the darker ink in the rose category. The third row is going to be the Mardi Gras, and then the last row will be the surfboard ink. Now, if you don't have two inks in the same color family, you can just go through and reapply the same ink that you used on the first layer of the stencil. Just add a more pressure and more ink, and it will show up as a little bit darker on your party hats. So now I'm adding the stencil with the stars. This is the layer D stencil, which I'm actually adding before layer C. And I'm adding the scrapbook.com lantern light, which is a yellow ink to the stars. So you can use this party hat stencil with or without this layer. So if you don't want the stars, you obviously don't have to use it. But you can also use this stencil layer if you just wanted to use it to create a starry background. You can use it by itself without the party hats. So now I'm going to add stencil layer C and the reason why I switched up the order is because I'm going to be adding this liquid embellishment on this layer to the pom-poms on the tops of the party hats. This is the silver glitter pops of color and I'm just putting it here on my palette knife and then adding it to the openings of the stencil. I wanted to add some sparkle to this stencil so by adding this silver glittery pops of color it gives me that that sparkle. So that's the reason why I added this last because I knew that if I added this first and then added the stars, I would have to wait for this layer to completely dry before I added the stars. So now once I add this, since I added as my last layer, I can set this aside and let it dry because there's nothing else I have to add to this stencil. So I'm going ahead and adding it to the openings and then just using the side of my palette knife to scrape off the excess. And once I finish, I can remove the stencil. I want to immediately wash that stencil in some warm water because I don't want the pops of color to stick to it. But just look at that beautiful glittery sparkle added to that card background. So now I'm going to set that layer aside to dry while I work on my next 
card layer and this time I'm using the layered ice cream cones four layer stencil so there are four layers to this stencil and then the first two layers of the stencil I'm going to be using the gingerbread and the leather ink from scrapbook.com so I'm going to align up my stencil onto my cardstock I did cut my cardstock to five and a half by five and a half inches and I'm adding layer A I'm going to add the gingerbread ink to all of the ice cream cones. So just one color on all of the cones. You can color up these ice cream cones in any color you want. If you wanted pink ice cream cones, you can do that by just changing up your ink color. So after I add ink to all of these ice cream cones, I'm going to remove that stencil and add layer B. This is going to just add the lines on the ice cream cones so the cones look like they have dimension to them. I'm using the leather ink. Next I'm going to add the layer C stencil and use the ballet slipper ink which is a very light pink ink for the ice cream part of these ice cream cones. Once I finish inking up that entire background with that stencil, I'm going to come in with the last stencil, which is stencil layer D, and this is the actual toppings on the ice cream. You can choose to use this layer or not, it's up to you, and I'm using two different color inks. I'm using the Parisian purple for the ice cream cones with sprinkles, and then the ones that have the little dots for the sprinkles, I'm using the Oasis ink, which is a teal ink. So I have just used all four layers of that stencil, but I did go back in and add another stencil to this background. And the stencil that I'm using is actually the star stencil from the layered party hats stencil pack and I just lined it up so that the stars are on the actual ice cream. I wanted to add a little bit of sparkle to my ice cream so I'm adding some more of these glitter silver pops of color to the stars. So I do encourage you to think about how you can use your stencils in different ways. So again, I'm taking a stencil that doesn't even belong with this pack of stencils and I'm using it here on this card. So I'm going to finish adding my silver glitter pops of color to the stars on this stencil. But some of the stars were not lining up with the actual ice cream itself. They were in the white area on that card layer. So what I did is I went ahead and let my background dry for just a moment. It doesn't take that long to dry. And once I knew it was completely dry, I did reposition the stencil so that the stars are covering the ice creams in the bottom half of this card layer and then I just added some more pops of color and look how beautiful that background is. So here are my three stenciled backgrounds using the ice cream cones, the party hats, and the birthday cakes. And now I'm ready to turn these into cards. So I cut the ice cream cone layer down to four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then I die cut the large celebrate shadow die out of some silver glitter cardstock, added it to the center of the card layer, and then I cut down a piece of pink cardstock to four and a quarter by five and a half inches and added the ice cream cone layer to the top and added it to an A2 size card base. So it's so easy to turn these backgrounds into simple cards by just adding a sentiment. For my next card, I will be using the Pretty Pink Posh Birthday Signs Stamps. This is also a new stamp set to Pretty Pink Posh. This set has a tiger and an alligator holding a sign, and you can also stamp the sentiments inside of the sign that they're holding. It also includes presents and a birthday cake, and there's some cupcakes as well. So I'm going to be using the tiger stamp that is included in this set and I stamped it out onto some Bristol Smooth cardstock with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink and I'm just coloring it up with my Zig markers. I added the orange color along the edges and then I added the flesh color to blend that orange color out towards the center of the tiger. So those are the only two colors that I use for the actual tiger itself is orange and the flesh color. Again, the orange color is just outlining the edge and then the flesh color will pull that color out towards the rest of that body part, whether it's the tail, the feet, the hands, 
For the mouth area, I color the top edge with mustard, and then I use the blender to blend that out, and then the nose I color with mid-brown. The sign I'm going to color with English lavender around the edges and then use the blender to blend it so that it looks lighter in the middle. And then for the party hat, I'm using yellow and I forgot to color the inside of the ears so I am gonna color those with the mustard color. And then I'm gonna finish the party hat by using the cobalt blue and the carmine red and I'm using the blender with each of those colors. So the carmine red is for the dots and the cobalt blue is for the entire part of the hat. And once I have the image colored, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my Misty and I'm going to place the stamp inside of the sign that I wanna use, ink that up with some black ink and stamp it down. So the sentiment says happy birthday. So here instead of using a word sentiment, I am using a stamp with a sentiment inside. So again, another easy way to add something to these stenciled backgrounds to make a quick card. I cut my background down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches and added that to an A2 size card. So for my next card, I am going to take this one up a level and I'm gonna turn this one into a shaker card. So I'm pulling out a die set from last year's birthday release. This one is the party cake die. I'm only using the square that is included in this die set. It's a square frame, which I die cut out of purple and pink cardstock. I'm going to use the larger square frame with the purple cardstock and add it to a piece of acetate. I do place an acrylic block over top of this cardstock just to make sure that it stays adhered to the acetate. It just needs a little bit of pressure holding that down in order to adhere, but it does adhere really well using this Barely Art glue. I go ahead and use the inside of the frame that I die cut with the pink cardstock, and I'm just adding that smaller frame to the inside of the purple piece. Okay, once it's adhered fully, I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm going to trim along the straight edge of this square to cut off the excess acetate. And now I'm ready to add foam to the back of this frame. When creating a shaker card, you do have to add some foam to give this piece some height so that the shaker elements have room to shake around inside of the frame. So I'm just doubling up on some adhesive foam strips, adding them around the frame, making sure that you don't leave any openings that all of the foam is connected, otherwise the shaker pieces could potentially fall out. The shaker pieces that I'm using are the Party Swirls Mix from Pretty Pink Posh. This is new to their birthday release. It has some pinks and purples and blues in there. So I'm adding it where I want it, right on the cardstock layer. And by the way, I did cut my cardstock layer down to four and one eighth by five and three eighth inches. So I'm just adding it to the cardstock, removing the back of the foam, and then adding that frame right to the top of the clay confetti mix to secure everything inside. I die cut the Wish Big script die with some white cardstock as well as with some silver glitter cardstock and I'm going to layer the white cardstock on top of the silver glitter cardstock. I'm just gonna offset it a little bit. I wanted to have a little bit of glitter showing on the edges of the words. So this die set is a new die set to Pretty Pink Posh. It's part of their birthday release. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the words to the square. Next, I'm gonna add that layer to a piece of purple cardstock that I cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And then I will add that to an A2 size card base. So my card base measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So that is gonna complete this shaker card. 
So don't forget if you are interested in purchasing anything, remember there is a 10% off coupon code in the description box below. And I will have all of the supplies linked in the description box as well as a coordinating blog post link. So I hope you liked my cards today. I would love to hear which stencil or card is your favorite. So leave me a comment and let me know. If you like this video, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to click that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so that you'll be notified when I release my next video. Have a great day everyone and thanks for watching. Bye bye.